It was October 21st, 2009, and nine-year-old Elizabeth Olton was excitedly asking her parents for permission to play at a neighbor's house. Her mother said it was okay, not knowing that it would be the last time that she would see her daughter alive. In the episode today, you'll hear about the story of Alyssa Bustamante, a 15-year-old girl with a history of mental health issues and suicide attempts. Unfortunately, her dark thoughts turned to actions, leading to a horrible murder that shocked the people in that town and the country. Discretion is advised. This is 10-Minute Murder. Welcome to 10-Minute Murder, brief and bingeable true crime. I'm Joe, I'm the host, and thank you for joining today. Okay, now if you've ever contacted me wondering about 10-Minute Murder shirts and stickers and stuff like that, I need you especially to open your eyeballs and your earballs for a moment here. Close out that game of Wordle and focus. In the show notes of this episode, you'll find a Linktree link. If you click that Linktree link, the very top option is the new 10-Minute Murder merchandise store. You can get in there and go nuts. If you have no interest in that sort of thing, that's cool too. I'm not going to pressure you into it. If you are connected with 10 Minute Murder on social media, you're going to see me post about the store from time to time, more so now because it's still new. I'm going to be very chalant with it for the next few weeks. And again, if you don't want to buy anything, that's, that's fine too. I get it. No big deal. All right, Joe, nobody cares about your dumb shirts. Let's get to today's story. Born on January 28, 1994, Alyssa Bustamante was the daughter of hardcore drug addicts and alcoholics who were often in jail. Because of this, she and her siblings were mostly raised by their grandparents in St. Martin's, Missouri. Despite their traumatic childhood, Alyssa seemed like every other teenager in her city. She liked writing poems and joking around with her friends. She also attended the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, even participating in its youth activities. But once Alyssa hit her teen years, it became clear to everyone that there was something deeply wrong with her. In 2007, she was forced to spend 10 days in a psychiatric hospital after a failed suicide attempt. When she was finally released, the doctors recommended that she continue taking antidepressants. However, they didn't work and she continued cutting her wrists. Alyssa's erratic behavior continued online where she listed her hobbies as killing people and cutting on her YouTube and MySpace accounts. She also posted a video that showed her touching an electric fence and encouraging two younger brothers to do the same. Around this time, Alyssa also tweeted, bad decisions make great stories, and all I want in life is to find a reason for all of this pain. While her grandparents tried to get her the help that she badly needed, others wrote off her behavior as a teenager being a teenager. But unfortunately, this wasn't just a phase, and Alyssa was about to get much worse. Nobody knows what made 15-year-old Alyssa Bustamante snap in mid-October 2009. She decided to finally make one of her dark dreams come true. One morning, she dug two holes in the ground and then went off to hang out with some friends, all while thinking about whose body she could place in those makeshift graves. After considering several options, Alyssa finally thought of the perfect victim— the Bustamante siblings were well-liked in their neighborhood, and it wasn't hard for them to find friends shortly after moving in with their grandparents in 2002. One of their regular playmates was nine-year-old Elizabeth Olton, who lived a few houses away. On the evening of October 21, 2009, Elizabeth begged her parents to allow her to play with Alyssa and her brothers. Her mother relented, and at about 5 p.m., she left home to go over to the Bustamantes. Somehow, Alyssa managed to convince Elizabeth to go into the forest behind their house. There, in the forest, she strangled the nine-year-old girl before slitting her throat and stabbing her several times. She then buried her body in the grave that she had dug a few days earlier. The murder left Alyssa feeling thrilled, and afterwards she wrote in her diary, quote, I just effing killed someone. I strangled them and slit their throat and stabbed them. Now they're dead. I don't know how I feel at the moment. It was amazing. As soon as you get over the, oh my God, I can't do this feeling, it's pretty enjoyable. I'm kind of nervous and shaky, though, right now. K 
okay, I gotta go to church now, lol. While Alyssa was at church, Elizabeth's parents were frantically searching for her. Around 7 p.m., they called the police, who combed through the nearby forest looking for her. The following morning, FBI agents arrived to help with the investigation, and one of the first people they questioned was Alyssa. She initially denied knowing where Elizabeth was and even used blue ink to cover up the diary entry that she had written after the murder. But when the police seized the notebook and brought in a handwriting expert, Alyssa knew the game was up. She led them to the forest behind her house, where she had covered the shallow grave with leaves. When the authorities dug it up, they found the body of the nine-year-old laying underneath. Alyssa was immediately taken into custody and charged with the first-degree murder of Elizabeth Olton. Her arrest sent shockwaves across the neighborhood, with a friend saying in horror, quote, Before this, before all of this, she was a normal 15-year-old girl. This really isn't her. This was not the Alyssa that I knew. Even though Alyssa was only 15, the court decided to try her as an adult due to the brutality of the crime. She entered a not guilty plea, despite her confession and the fact that she had already led police to Elizabeth's body. While in custody, Alyssa regularly tried to harm herself, using her own fingernails to cut her wrists, but she was also put on suicide watch after and began exhibiting signs of anxiety and depression. Because of this, the court granted her lawyer's motion to have her remanded to a psychiatric institution where she could be treated while awaiting trial. On January 30th, 2012, 18-year-old Elizabeth Bustamante finally stood trial for the murder of Elizabeth Olton. To the court's surprise, she pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and armed criminal action. It was then revealed that two weeks earlier, she had accepted a plea deal to the lesser charges in order to avoid the death penalty. That meant, though, that she could be released from prison on parole after 30 years. Alyssa's defense team tried to plead for leniency, arguing that she had a troubled childhood with mental health issues and multiple suicide attempts, as well as a family history of drug abuse. They also pointed out that her prescription to the antidepressant Prozac had been increased only a few weeks before the murder, which could have contributed to her mental state. To support their arguments, the defense called psychologists to the stand who testified that Alyssa was, quote, psychologically damaged and severely emotionally disturbed. According to them, she exhibited symptoms of borderline personality disorder, which is characterized by sudden mood swings and inappropriate displays of anger. In her final statement to the court, Alyssa said, quote, If I could give my life to bring her back, I would. I just want to say I'm sorry for what happened. I'm so sorry. Elizabeth's parents gave no response. Later, though, Patricia Priest, her mother, would call Alyssa a monster. On February 8, 2012, Alyssa Bustamante was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Elizabeth Olton. She was also convicted of armed criminal action, for which she was given a consecutive sentence of 30 years. However, since she accepted the plea deal, she will be up for parole after 35 years. In 2014, Alyssa appealed her sentence but was denied. In October the following year, Elizabeth's mother, Patricia Priest, filed a wrongful death lawsuit against her which was later settled for $5 million. She remains incarcerated at the Women's Eastern Missouri Reception of the Diagnostic and Correctional Center in Vandalia, Missouri. Alyssa Bustamante may have been convicted of murdering nine-year-old Elizabeth, but for the Oltons, no punishment and no amount of money will ever bring their little girl back. That's today's 10-minute murder, brief and bingeable true crime. Thanks for being a part of it today. And if this is your first time ever listening to 10-Minute Murder, I'm glad that you took the time out of your day to do that. And I hope that you become a subscriber wherever you're listening right now. Take a look at that and make sure you hit subscribe. It doesn't always say subscribe. They sneakily try to hide it. I don't know why they do this, but uh, sometimes it says follow or it might say subscribe. Or in the case of like Apple Podcasts, you click that plus button that's at the top right-hand corner. You click that and you become a subscriber and you won't miss any future episodes of 10-Minute Murder. Also in the show notes, you'll find a link so that you can connect on social media. Actually, links with an S. There are multiple places to connect. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, YouTube, like a whole bunch of places. Uh, the link tree uh, link... It has all that stuff. So if you want to just click one link and, and find all the places, you can do that or you can do the individual. It doesn't matter to me. But it's all there in the show notes of this episode. Again, thanks for listening. 
Be safe and have a good night.